Grazie. What is your main mission in uh, mission? during the Ukrainian elections? Our mission here is to re uh, observe the election process, to meet with um, different organizations, um, Ukrainian organizations, you know, such as Opora and Chesno. We meet with the with the police departments. We meet with um, the candidate parties, in order to understand and watch um, how the election process is unfolding. Our role is to monitor, not to interfere. We are to be independent. And um, at the end of the election process, the end result is not our objective. The, our objective is to record what we have seen, to see if uh, how Ukraine is measuring up to international election standards. Uh, who finances your mission? The Canadian government. And all of your reports are public, or some of them just for government? No, they're all public. We will. They will go on our website. Uh, they will go to your government. They will go to uh, you know the CEC, to Tsevakan. So how many observers do you have right now? Uh, we have on the ground currently 50 long-term observers in all of the oblasts where elections will be held. And we will then have an additional 128 arriving the week, just a little bit before the elections and staying after for about four days. And uh, Canada also has a commitment to OSCE to provide 15% of their total, which they are doing. And that is another um, 15 long-term observers and 112 short-term observers is making Canada's total 305. How many observers will be in Odessa? Uh, there are two long-term observers here and they're, they have been here first for the first round since January, 20, uh, since February. And then now they have been here for two weeks and uh, they will be joined by six more short-term observers and they will be going, um, the, the other observers will be in other areas like Ismail, etc. Please tell me observer requirements. And to be an observer, you generally are someone who has an interest in, in uh, the election process, uh, promoting democracy, um, perhaps a political science student at university, um, a teacher, um, it can be a doctor, a, a lawyer, a people that just have an interest in um, promoting democracy in the world. Do observers get some money for being here? The uh, long-term observers are paid an honorarium, a daily honorarium for their work here. Many people leave their jobs to come here here um, and so they have uh, some compensation but the short-term observers are strictly volunteers and um, you know their expenses their flight is paid here but they are not paid a salary have you witnessed uh, any violation already um, we have been uh, watching, our um, legal analyst has been going through the courts, um, uh, attending the, the sessions in the courts, you know, and there have been a, a number of small, um, I, I wouldn't even call them huge violations, but just tr court challenges. So we are aware of those. Um, one of the issues that we have our eye on very much is the cloning of candidate names. Um, this is something that is a new experience for our observers. And um, so we are very watchful of that. And then um, the other thing is, of course, billboard signage, you know, are they legal, are they properly put up, you know, um, advertising, electioneering, um, access to media. These are the types of things that we're looking for. And so far, you know, everything is just really starting to come to the peak. Maybe this week now we're going to get into an area where we may witness some of that. So cloning candidates, it's it's just a Ukrainian stuff, not for candidates. Is there not, nothing <laughs> like that in Canada, yeah? Well, no, I can't say that I can recall um, that happening. Um, we have many less candidates. So in your opinion, uh, this huge amount of the candidates, it's good or bad for people? It's different and it's an opportunity for everyone. I mean, you want to be a candidate and you can raise, you know, the, the 40,000 hryvni, you can be a candidate. Um, is this the most effective way for democracy to unfold? Well, th that will be seen. For now, invitation for um, observers from European Parliamentary Assembly are, is cancelled. So what does it mean for Ukraine? Oh, what does it mean? Um, well, Ukraine has its, its political strategy, its foreign policy strategy, and um, I, I, you know, it just means you're not going to have observers from some, some countries. Um, you will have many observers as it is. I think, you know, the contingent that comes from many organizations of the world will be more than enough to have eyes on the ground. 
Now it's a lot of rumors that elections will be disrupted. Have you heard about that? No, I have not had that rumor, though, you know, on the first and second round of the presidential, there were also, there were rumors of potentially disruption, um, and none happened, as you know. So perhaps these are, um, I mean, these are very feisty, lively elections with many, many candidates. And so I think this type of rumor is hopefully just a rumor. I was traveling by train and I witnessed one situation when a man from Canada who was observer on elections right the day after it was uh, criticized people who vote for Zelensky because he was supported Poroshenko. That I think is one of the um, strongest tenets of being an election observer is to follow the international standards and principles so that type of a commentary by an observer is very disappointing. So, but it must be tough to choose observers in Canada because a lot of Ukraine, uh, Canadian Ukrainians are supporting Poroshenko. Like, um, yeah, a lot of Ukrainian Canadians were in support of um, those that live there. However, when you become an election observer, you sign a code of conduct, and your honor is at stake, right? And so, obviously, that person didn't take that seriously enough. Um, I'd like to think that that's an exception, and I'd like to think that our observers follow the letter of the law and honor the commitment they've made. We do have a very strong Ukrainian-Canadian community. Uh, 1.4 million now identify themselves on our census as being of Ukrainian background. So the ties are very close, as you know, and um, we have um, a percentage, but not a high, maybe 40% or less, um, are of Ukrainian-Canadian background. We sit and we talk about each of the parties, you know, their platform, um, how they're presenting, how they're advertising. And we, we look at that as impartially as we can. Частина військовослужбовців займає передню частину судна, яка називається БАК, і просто скидає як. I have participated in this exercise over the uh, the last three years, and each year, each year we have seen great improvement in a very short period of time. And the uh, as I stated, I was talking to my commanding officer who is underway, and we continue to uh, to make progress, great progress. Редакция.